There's a very high chance that the Imo State governorship election that will be held in November next month is already over even before it starts. Let's take it one by one. Remember how Hope Uzodema who came forth in the past election was miraculously pushed to the first position by the Supreme Court justices. In another judgment at the time, the Supreme Court disqualified another candidate in the Imo State governorship election in the name of Uche Nwosu because of double nomination. At the time, he held the governorship ticket of APC and Action Alliance. While delivering their judgment, the Supreme Court held, as you can see, that the two parties, that's APC and Action Alliance, didn't have a candidate in the said Imo State governorship election. The Supreme Court did not go further to disqualify Hope Uzodema even after holding that the two parties did not field a candidate in the election. Based on this, the PDP went back to the Supreme Court to ask them to enforce their own judgment. Yes, since they held that APC and Action Alliance having given their nomination to one candidate, as a result of that, that they didn't field any candidate in the said election. Why is Imo State Governor Hopo Zodema still the governor of Imo State? Mind you, the PDP filed this enforcement suit in July 2020, that's three years ago, and the Supreme Court set 31st of October 2023 for hearing of the matter. Oh, three years to hear a suit that is seeking to remove someone from office and the person has a four-year tenure. Three and a half years into the person's tenure, the Supreme Court is about to hear the matter that they should have heard the same day. Yes, because of the urgency. The Supreme Court understands that timely judgment is needed once constitutional matters are involved. They must deliver judgment on time. They did it in Bayelsa when they disqualified David Leon because his deputy forged a certificate. They understood that someone who forges a certificate should never benefit from the office he's seeking. It is there in the constitution. It is a constitutional matter. They were able to deliver a timely judgment to disqualify David Leon a day before his swearing in. So it's not as if they don't understand this. If they didn't disqualify him on time and allowed him to benefit from the office, say up to a year before disqualifying him, it will be justice denied because justice delayed is justice denied. Yes, going by the intention of the drafters of the constitution. They don't want any certificate forger or anybody, especially someone that was involved in double nomination, to benefit from that office. So the Supreme Court justices have a duty to stop that person from benefiting because he's trying to cut corners. Anybody cutting corners or flouting the law should never be allowed to benefit from that office he's seeking. That's the intention of the law. So there's no two ways about it. There's nothing like using their discretion or anything. They should always apply the law the way it's supposed to be applied. Another example where the Supreme Court failed to deliver timely judgment was in 2007, when INEC insisted on conducting election in Anambra State. P2B went to court to challenge the rascality, as he would put it. So that's why the Supreme Court justice is knowing the position of the law when P2B filed a matter to stop INEC from conducting election in Anambra State. They failed to deliver a timely judgment to stop the unnecessary waste of funds to conduct a governorship election in Anambra State when one shouldn't have been held in the first place. They also failed, even after the election has been conducted, to stop the swearing in of Andy Uba as governor of Anambra State. After 17 days that Andy Uba was sworn in as governor, the Supreme Court verdict came in annulling the entire election and saying that P2B's tenure hasn't ended. Why did they sleep on the job? They are employed to answer questions when the executive branch are confused or even the legislative arm. They come to them to interpret the law so they should not take one year or forever to interpret one line of text. This is their main job description, interpretation of the law. Granted that they are very busy, they even handle civil cases that originate from state high courts up to the Supreme Court, but constitutional matters must be given top priority because of obvious reasons. This is a problem and it all points to corruption. 
judges must stop pretending that they've never heard about election disputes before it came to their desk, especially on appeal. Granted that they should not be influenced by what they saw on television or read from newspapers, but it's all part of the research into cases that come to them. Immediately someone files a case in court, especially when it is a constitutional matter, the judges involved are supposed to get serious briefing on the matter. After the briefing, they will quickly go into research in order to form an opinion and they will deliver judgment. That's how it's supposed to work. Look at what happened in Chicago where Tinubu appealed the decision of the lower court. He took the judge a few days to reach a verdict and deliver judgment. That's how it's supposed to work. Granted that Nigerian judges are overburdened and overworked, but constitutional matters must take top priority when they come to their court. Other civil cases or even criminal cases must wait for constitutional matters to be decided. It shouldn't be taking years to decide a few lines of text. Or are they wasting all this time researching on technicalities? It doesn't make any sense. Someone forged their certificate and the person with the legal authority to produce that certificate have come out to say, no, we didn't issue this certificate to Tinubu. It's written in black and white in the constitution. The law says anyone who forges a certificate must be disqualified. It's very simple. Apply the law and disqualify the person. Like they did in the past, they disqualified David Leon of Bayelsa State, including other candidates that they've disqualified. Even in this current election cycle, the APE court has disqualified some candidates. So it's very simple. Look at the accusation, look at the evidence, look at the law, interpret it and deliver judgment. Everyone goes home. So it will be very interesting to see how the hearing will go at the Supreme Court on the 31st of October when they will hear the enforcement suit that was brought by PDP and Emeka Hyodioha to determine why Hopu Zolima is still in office despite the Supreme Court saying that APC didn't have a candidate in the governorship election in Imo State. Who knows, after the hearing, they might fix a date in 2030 for judgment. Yes? Since they took more than three years for hearing alone, doing the main work might require two times the length of time they used to do the hearing. Anyway, let's hope that they will do the right thing and enforce their own judgment by disqualifying Hopu Zodema because they've already said that in the judgment. If they do that, that means he will not be eligible to contest for the election. Not that alone, the election will no longer hold because that will mean restoring the person that came second. In the past election in Imo State, and that person is Emekai Hedioha, who originally was declared winner by INEC in that election, but was sacked by the Supreme Court. About the appeal hearing that is coming up at the Supreme Court tomorrow, that's talking about the presidential election judgment appeal by Pito B and Atiku Abubaka. Many rumors are flying around, nothing is confirmed yet, but we'll know all that tomorrow. All justices that will be on the panel, there are rumors that some have recused themselves because of conflict of interest. This is the normal thing to do. One wouldn't need to shout about it before a judge will say, hey, my sons are in APC. I shouldn't be hearing an appeal that APC will benefit from. It's a pure conflict of interest. Also, there is one that is supposed to retire on the 27th of October. There are rumors that that one already withdrew. So we might just be heading to a constitutional crisis. This matter must be heard by seven justices of the Supreme Court. The CJN already withdrew. Justice Okoro recused himself. If these two won't be on the panel, that means we have seven justices remaining. Or is it six? Because one passed recently. Anyway, everything will be clearer by tomorrow. And remember that we'll be bringing you the hearing from the Supreme Court as usual. Thanks for watching.